All right, now put on your thinking caps and wind your memory back to three weeks ago when Dan last preached and Jade did the kids' talk. And I wonder if you can remember where was Joseph when we left that week. Yes, Alice? Do you remember where Joseph might have been? Mm Mm-hmm. Yep, he got chucked in a well, a pit. He was, things weren't looking good. He was in a pit. Yes. He did have his cloak. Yep, before that he did have all of that taken off him. And then we left last time with Joseph in, in a pit. And he got sold. Or oh, well, we'll keep going. So we've done that. So today, Dan, he'll read chapter 39 and we'll find out a lot more. But a quick little recap of some of those details is after he got out of the pit he was sold and he ended up with Potiphar and he was one of Pharaoh's important officers so he didn't just get sold as a slave to any old person he was sold to someone quite important at the time and so slaves often weren't treated very well but for Joseph it was pretty obvious that God was with him because he wasn't just treated like any other slave he was put in charge of Potiphar's whole house That's pretty impressive, isn't it? It's not normally what happens to slaves. But then things turn a little bit of a corner again and things were not looking good for Joseph. He was accused of something he didn't do. Have you ever been accused of something you didn't do? No? Oh, that's lovely. Lucky you. (laughs) Have you ever been accused of something you didn't do? Wasn't by me though, was it? No. No. Definitely I can't really remember that, but I do remember when I was... Is anybody nine? Have we got a new nine? All right. Well, when I was nine, I went to boarding school. And at boarding school, yes, um, things have definitely changed. And at boarding school, I was in a class and the teacher had to leave the room and he said, keep going with your writing practice. And when I was at school, I had a ruler, I had a pencil, I had an eraser, and I didn't bring it, but I also had a fountain pen with ink. And you had to practice how to do your writing. Well, the teacher left the room, and the boy sitting behind me stood up with his ruler. He flicked my rubber eraser onto the floor and I really needed it because I wasn't very good at writing and I made a lot of mistakes and I had to rub them out. So I got up to pick my eraser up and the teacher walked back in and yelled at me because I was out of my seat and he wouldn't listen. He didn't listen. He sent me and the boy behind who'd done it laughed. And he sent me to the principal, the headmaster's office. I went down to the headmaster's office and he didn't want to listen to my story, my side either. And you know what happened? I actually got the cane across the back of my legs. Okay. Now, I'm fine. I'm okay. I got over it. All right? Well, the cane doesn't sound very nice, but you did get over that and it wasn't really such a big deal. Joseph, on the other hand, was accused of something he didn't do and he was thrown into jail. He couldn't just say, oh, no, I didn't didn't do it, it wasn't me. He was thrown into jail. They didn't believe him. I'm glad I didn't get thrown into jail. I'm pretty glad you didn't either, actually. But there is good news because God was still with Joseph and that became obvious again because instead of him just being in jail as a prisoner, he became in charge of the prisoners. He was the head of people in jail, I suppose you put it that way. And this helped Joseph to stand firm in trusting God because he could try to avoid sin by seeing that God was always with him and helping him. Just like God is always with us through Jesus today. So we're going to pray and we're going to thank God that he is always with us. Would you like to pray? Okay, let's shut our eyes so we're not distracted. Father, thank you for being with Joseph and keeping your promise to bless him. Thank you for Jesus, who is you with us now. 
please help us to remember you are always with us. Amen.